Welcome to the Windows Computer and Technology channel, and uh, we talked about moment three that is about to arrive. Actually, if you're in a uh, the Insider Preview or the Release Preview ring, you might already have some of the features. Here I am, but uh, it seems that a lot of the features are not rolled on yet. Uh, so how it's going to work is that in the last week of this month of May, we're going to have the um, week, um, you know, bug fixing updates and so on, what they call the preview updates. And they will, of course, add moment three. But once again, Microsoft is not adding everything to everyone at the same time, which also makes it very complex. But there's all sorts of things that are going to show up. Um, if I run down a list of what's going to be in that moment three, um, and by the way, if you don't, install it at the end of this month on June the 13th when we get Patch Tuesday for June. Well, that update will install and Moment 3 will be for everyone. But once again, doesn't mean all features are turned on for everyone. So according to what we'll see is a few things like uh, Alt-Tab Change for multitasking in Windows 11. The way it's going to be configured is going to be different. Access Keys in File Explorer. So when you actually Go to File Explorer. Now there's going to be a possibility to see keys associated with each option. So when we right click on a menu or on something, you get, of course, your menu. But at the end, you'll see that there are keys associated with that that will be shortcuts, basically, that you can use to quickly go from option to option. The snipping tool will be the default tool when you actually do print screen. That is reversible. That means you can turn it off and get your print screen back. At least that's a good thing. There'll be some changes in the account information that you see here for uh, your OneDrive and um, your different um, accounts that you have and the, um, the subscriptions and when you know everything's going to be charged and so on. There's a lot more information and details in here. Um, if we look at the uh, print screen uh, information it will be of course uh, um, changeable so in the accessibility if we go here and check it out um, you'll be able to change the uh, the different options that are um, in in here uh, for the print screen and so on uh, accessibility and I believe it's somewhere here where there's keyboard here we go uh, if we go down here use print screen button to open screen snipping it's off by default. You already have it, by the way, but it's off by default. It will be turned on with that update um, coming up. So there's a few things like that that's going to be changed. Uh, improvements to the touch keyboard. So anything that you have that is a touch device. Widgets will have improvements. What's going to happen is you're going to be able to have previews of any new app or any new widget that you want to get. So if you actually go into your widgets and you want to add widgets, you will have a way of actually being able to view the widget before you can even actually add it to the widgets panel. Two-factor authentication codes will copy to the clipboard. So if you receive notification from an app with two-factor authentication code, well, you'll have the copy to clipboard button so that you can keep it temporarily so you can enter it wherever it needs to be entered. Seconds in the clock. A lot of people have been asking that. Well, that moment is bringing the clock and it's bringing the option to have seconds, which, of course, some of you wanted to have. So this is going to be available starting with moment three. And as you see here, even though I have the preview installed, it's still not enabled. VPN status icon in the system tray. There will be, of course, uh, content adaptive brightness control support, depending on what you're looking at. And on the settings of the, um, you know, uh, your PC concerning how it uses power, the power consumption, depending on the apps and time of day and all of that, all sorts of adaptive brightness changes are there. Uh, finally, USB 4 hubs and devices will have their settings. So when you'll go into your settings app, there will be available in the settings app 
um, in the Bluetooth and devices, uh, there will be now USB 4 settings that are going to be happening because USB 4 is now getting to be a thing there. Of course, you'll need to have that newest technology for it to work. Uh, presence sensor privacy settings that are going to be available in the privacy and security. They're going to add that. You'll have live kernel memory dumps in the task manager that will be available. So this is going to be able to maybe help you track down some of the problems that you might have. So when you have a process or you have something happening in these options, you'll see that there is a... Um, when you right click, there will be an option that's going to be called uh, create, uh, create a live kernel memory dump, which will, because right now you only have create dump file. So this is one option that's going to be in there for that. Of course, as soon as we get all of these features, I'll talk about them in detail. Uh, Multi-app kiosk mode, there will be more live captions, voice access commands are improved, and there'll be tons of bug fixes, of course. So they're going to arrive at the end of the month. For those asking, once again, it doesn't have to be on Tuesday. I got somebody said, yeah, yeah, it's always Tuesday. No, it's not. It's the last week. And Microsoft does say the last week, the fourth week. So that means the fourth week, that could be up to, I guess, May the 30th or something like that. Uh, so um, basically, uh, this is going to be when it happens. So uh, the fourth week of the month is when, but it doesn't have to be, like I said, on absolutely a Tuesday. And, um, you know, Microsoft is always complicated, but it should be normally the fourth week somewhere. Um, if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe. Give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching my videos.